Hello and welcome to another episode of our NWE channel where we go over some replays. Uh, today I've brought a very fresh replay uh, that I just played yesterday in our latest uh, Fight Club episode. And I will go over this together with uh, Elwin. So say hello. Hello, it's me, Elwin. Some of you might know me better by Yakuza. Uh, this, is a, this is a replay of the type of deck that I like to play as well. So I thought I'm going to jump in because I have maybe some uh, interesting things to add. Yeah, especially you are known for always picking some some interesting lines when you when you are playing these kinds of very horizontal decks, especially out of NBN. Fair. So I think this will be very interesting to look at. I did see you pull similar lines like that I like to pull um, in the live stream, so I'm looking forward to this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so some words to the NEH deck. Uh, I think you actually judged at the day of Worlds, right? So Yeah, I judged on the Saturday you... on the main, but I played this in the team event on the Friday. Yeah. And I think pretty little has changed between uh, what we played at Worlds and what I'm playing here now. There was only one slot that always, like even at the day, we were very unsure about. Some of us played tier subscription. Some of us played. What did I even play? I don't. I don't remember. I think another piece of ice or something. Um, no, I actually played the planogram. Yeah, that that was the uh, the sl the choice of the day for me. Mm. Uh, but we weren't really sure about what to pick. Um, and recently, I've actually enjoyed putting one reverse accounts in here just for some situations. And uh, but this is more or less a flex slot, whereas everything else is pretty much set in stone at this point. I, um, seems to be like the best choice for ice suit, the best choice for asset suit, and so on. I really like the addition of the reversed accounts. I don't like it as much in Fight Club because it's a known quantity, but I do like the addition. But like the fact that it's a known quantity makes some decisions even like I think it it also benefits from being known. Because then the runner has to respect one more thing that could be going on. That's uh, but. That's a fair point. Yeah. And uh, the wage worker synergy is amazing. Yes, exactly. And so let's look at the other side. Like, what am I playing against? This was a lead deck, a uh, 45 card list. Um, just a general good stuff shapery kind of list, I would say. The overall win conditions are two deep dives that should get you there. If they don't, you have a DJ Fenris to maybe get a third. Um, and. To gain the extra click, there is a Hana Wheels and the Pichasau. Um And other than that, I would say... I guess the two Fermenters are really uh, kind of interesting. You don't see them every day in, in Shaper, but other than that, it's, I would say, pretty usual Shaper list. Yeah, it's pretty... Like, it looks pretty reg deep dive lat to me, excepting the Fermenters that you mentioned. Um, looking at the list, like, immediately... My eyes drifted downward to see if there were, if there were copies of a certain program there. There was a single copy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. A there's a single a sing copy. A single copy is there. Yeah, there's a single copy there, and it's we can fight through a single Parisha, but it is good to know that there is a single Parisha. Yeah, exactly. And I'm also seeing three stone ship chart room, which is probably interesting and probably a decision because on the other side, uh, they were they were playing Egg Infusion, uh, so it's probably like the the good old taking against your own deck kind of decision uh which i'm uh, also definitely a fan <laughs> of and which i also did here so uh we are lucky that some of the slots went into that instead of something like bones or a second parisha or something like that i've definitely seen lads like this with bones which would have made uh yeah much more difficult yeah but I, I i think this would be an interesting game to see how to fight through the tech that people bring against you because uh uh, let me tell you that Perisha will become very relevant very soon. Fair, fair. All right. I would say let's jump into the game. Okay. Uh, here we are. Uh, once again, uh, we will be focusing on the corp side of things because that was what I was playing. Uh, we will have some comments on runner side, but like generally we try to focus on the lines and decisions that uh, uh, one particular player, in this case myself, uh, uh, took here. And I think I will mostly be just going through a replay and uh, asking you what you think and what you would have done in, in a, a certain situation. So I would say let's uh, even start here. The I will zoom in for now as long as we have few remotes, but that might change soon. Uh, what do you think on the starting hand? This is a keep. Yeah. 
This is a keep. I don't need to... F- like, it's not ideal, but I don't have to think about this. This is a keep. We don't see Gendies. There's a, a single... Like, we might run into two Gendies from the draw in the mm. NEH trigger. Yeah. But probably... And the Spin Doctor, maybe. And the Spin Doctor, yeah. maybe. But this is just pure gas. We can ice... Uh, we can ice R&D. Maybe ice a Gendy if we really want to push it. This is a good hand. I definitely agreed, and uh, after exchanging GLHFs and muting spectators, uh, we both actually kept our hands. Uh, l- looking at Jorana's hand, we also see why, because Hannah is also really in starting hand, yeah. as well as an SMC. So And a commission. Uh, also, and a commission, and even more money, and some more money. Like, uh, the runner hand couldn't be better against any age, I think. Uh, there, there's pretty much nothing... I guess the SMC could just be Parisia, yeah. but... Other than that, <laughs> you're pretty happy to see what you see. Interesting, All right. interesting uh, little thing. Uh, I saw yeah. parts of this game yesterday already because uh, I watched it, but that was obviously on stream. Obviously, that was <laughs> with closed hands. So this is going to be interesting because I yeah. had opinions on certain lines with closed <laughs> hands already. And also for anybody, uh, the the link to the uh, actual live stream that Cody did uh, will be online, uh, or will be in the description below. Um, so if anybody wants to watch live commentary from, uh, I think Cody and Axu, uh, that will be available there. So yeah, first click or like zero click, we managed to draw into a seamless launch. What would you do here? NEH install probably the Marilyn because that's the first thing we want to see and after that uh, move on yep let's do that yeah. <laughs> I, I fully agreed yeah then the, uh, then the bladder word yeah mm-hmm. now we want to keep the spin because we want to keep uh, at least one install in hand uh, we want to keep an asset in hand to be sure we get yeah. our NEH power next turn so probably now we ice something and there's nothing we really need to protect so it's R&D. Yeah, that's ex- actually what I did. You you run into a risk of maybe losing the Spin Doctor to a run, but then again, the runner had to find the one in four and then pay two credits. We are also fine with that. And we are playing enough assets that we'll likely find something new. And worst case, we can also just install the ice because like having a Sarevna on a remote is also not the worst thing. Yeah. So, uh, also, we're not against Krim, so yes. icing HQ is less important. We we don't have a lot of ice, so using it effectively is important. Not Krim, so HQ becomes less important. We don't have a DBS yet, but if we find a DBS yeah. early, then it becomes very viable not to maybe not to ice HQ the entire game. Yeah, exactly. Because HQ is just a place where agendas go in and then go into the scoring mode. That's definitely a mode that this deck can operate in. Yep. Um, yeah, and then we see the runner starting the turn. Drawing a card just to see options. Daily cards hits the table and creative commission. So deciding to play somewhat slowly here despite we, us seeing that there is a lot of gas in hand. But deciding to just uh, yeah, slowly set up here and be ready for future turns. I mean, I agree mm. with the decision. I think it's fine. Yeah. Also, we are exchanging uh, <laughs> the fact that I'm not doing any. That's also one part, like, let trigger C on four cards. So uh, deciding not to install any of these cards makes sense in that sense as well. So since we don't have any Spin Doctor, they get to draw with let. And we get to poke at their hand. Yep. Hitting a symbol ship. So, I, don't, I would assume, yeah. I don't really have opinions on the symbol chip hit. Yeah, I think I think it's fine. Like, a symbol chip is definitely value, but hitting the henna would have been huge. Everything else is somewhat exchangeable. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and I would assume that I just install a spin doctor here, and then we'll yep. go on from there. Um. I think also the rest of the spin doctor here is pretty normal as we only look at ice and I would rest here as well because we want to keep the tempo. Oh, so much for that. I I didn't actually do that. I thought you rest here. 
Ah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Okay. I remember this as well. And this was in- interesting to me. So, okay, obviously we don't have anything to protect yet. But here yeah. I would be, I would be very tempted to rest the spin doctor um, and make a really annoying remote immediately if we draw anything uh, interesting. Yeah. Because we have a seamless, like. We can really put the gas on here if we want to. Um, I think my, my, my line of thought was actually playing around the lead ability. I was expecting for him to uh, invest quite a lot of flicks in drawing to find the tech. Like I, I didn't know that the tech was already in hand. Mm-hmm. So I was I was assuming that a lot of time would be spent into drawing into Hannah, drawing into an SMC or a Parisia, uh, and then starting contesting my board. And also because I was expecting that, I was also thinking that icing some of my econ for now would be a good idea. I didn't expect myself to start scoring very soon. Mm-hmm. So I was expecting this Maryland to take down pretty much to zero, most likely. So actually protecting it was somewhat relevant so that the runner can't just, I don't know, draw into an overclock and a creative commission and then decide to just tackle my econ here and there, here and then. So. Because if the, if the runner gets to destroy both of the Maryland and the Bladderworth, we are just sitting at five credits and nothing is ticking for us. So yeah. I, I felt that protecting Maryland here makes makes actually sense. I don't know if I would have rest. Like I, I think I put the Messing Chest one there. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would have rest that if if he runs. But it was just as a as a yeah, as as an assurance for uh, insurance for uh, having some econ going for us. That's fair. I mean, I see the line. I would be very interested to see what the next two cards are. Yeah. And also, that, that was another thing. The Spin Doctor might help us just dodge one lap trigger, which is relevant. Especially if if he had to like do some contortions to get two, three cards in hand, and I then get to... On top of that foiled lead draw, I thought that was pretty much a, a lot of upside for me with very little downside because this ice needs to get installed at some point anyways. Mm-hmm. Fair, 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 fair. So let's see what the runner is doing. Drawing a card, installing SMC, installing Hannah, and running on the ladder word because you can't really afford to lose too many cards. Oh. So Bladderbird is gone. One more click left. And I think here now the the part that I was talking about hits. Uh, he takes a credit. I read the spin doctor. Okay. And bolt let draw, which uh, was pretty good, I think, at this point. Because every yeah. every single draw is just a click that the runner has to invest. So I kind of took away a click, maybe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I see the point. Like, I'm pretty sure... I would have been tempted to res the Spin Doctor um, and maybe would have pushed the Rashida that, in this turn. Yeah, that is that is definitely true. In that case, I'm getting maybe a Rashida and he's getting one more card in hand. So um, also, I think also a fine choice, to be honest. Yeah, different style choice, different, different, different yeah. instinct. Yeah. Um, so I think now I am just starting to install things because, um, yeah, now is maybe the, the point to talk about this. This is, Led is really happy here, I think. Having found Hannah and Perisha very early on, being yep. on five credits, which is a good credit total to be at because any oppo doesn't hurt all too much. Um, this is like a really good situation for the for the runner here i think so what, what are your thoughts on my prospects into this game and how i should uh, navigate through the situation see here so the thing is you ice that maryland and that maryland's gonna pay out quite well um the thing is i would have probably chosen a different line and with my line mm-hmm. i would probably have lost the maryland which isn't issue but on the other hand i might have been i might be able to push the rashida which rockets me forward yeah i would be very tempted and this is a very 
how to put this very hypothetical situation like i would be very tempted to play for the score get to three points as fast as possible so it can start throwing around fully powered oppos yeah um because yeah. i would be looking to basically to put it rudely destroy his economy as fast as possible <laughs> yeah I, I i can definitely see that um my experience was that whenever I tried to do that, the runner was able to contest my econ. Mm -hmm. And a fully powered oppo actually means seven credits of investment. And it was more that I couldn't survive that kind of economic pressure rather than my opponents being not being able to survive. Like, in the end, I would be poor and my opponent would be poor. Mm -hmm. But that tended to be good for my opponent or better for my opponent than for me because I still need to... I don't know, find a self-growth program, find uh, what is it called a shipment from Valisbursk uh, to actually benefit from them having tax, whereas they could just start pressuring me. Even if they didn't have any board state or anything, if I can't raise my eyes or if my eyes that was intended to tag doesn't anymore, then that might still be enough for them to squeeze out a win. So my experience was that actually like seven credit oppos are really hard to uh, to finance mm -hmm. and you need a board state behind it to be able to finance that and my thought here was that I need to pressure him economically um, and that has to go through assets because that is what my deck has most of Yep. and my my experience has been that both Parisha and Miss Bones are interestingly finite like both of them pay out like 12-ish credits in a game and you have much more than 12 credits of trash cards in yes. your deck. So my my plan here is to, when I when I see a pet campaign and when I see like DBS and stuff like that, mm -hmm. just put them out as much as I can. Mm -hmm. And if the runner tries to only contest whatever I'm putting out, then I'm kind of like slightly winning that, that exchange. Yes. No, I agree with this. And it, yeah. I agree with I would have assumed that I would have assumed that you might of all people understand this. <laughs> no, absolutely. I agree with this fully because we have so many assets that are forecast to trash. We will slowly yeah. destroy his economy. But the main difference that I see is like that last turn. I would have played more aggressive. Um yeah, and makes sense. that ties into getting as fast to fully powered oppo. Um Yeah, that makes that makes sense. Also like being fast also means that you're scoring crypto crashes, which are yes. powerful agendas. So uh, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I think that's definitely a, a, a choice thing where I play with the enough for me, play more controlish than you do, maybe. But yeah, let's let's go on from here. Um, I would assume that I just installed the pet campaign now, yeah. and I don't think there's much. I guess there's something to talk about here. Like what what else do you do here? Well, do you push the Rashida? That's the interesting decision here. Exactly. I would push it here again, but that would leave me with two ice, uh, two remotes with ice on it, which feels not ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I. Oh, I actually remember what I did. Um, yeah, I I do agree. Mm -hmm. uh, two ice with remote is like. Two, having two remotes with ice is not the worst thing, especially against a runner that has uh, tech against you and can realistically trash stuff. Yep. Um, because you will have to protect your wage workers at some point anyway. So having a second safe remote for your wage workers and your scoring remote makes sense. Yeah, that's fine. Um, like, like it basically, you have a single remote to make the really valuable stuff like wage workers and the money yeah. more costly. That's fine. Exactly. Uh, what I was thinking here is that I don't have the economy to actually res any of those. Like, if I had a ping in hand, I think what I would do is install Rashida, install ping. Mm -hmm. um, but what I went for here was install Bladderworth and take a credit. Okay. And I felt that I will need this credit at some point. <laughs> I felt that um, installing Rashida naked here is not an option because mm -hmm. with Hannah and Perishare, like, all of my remotes are going to get checked. Or, like, there's a high chance of the Rashida getting checked and trashed. Mm -hmm. So I decided to actually instead keep it in hand for later. Maybe once that Maryland runs out, maybe even over-install the Maryland, but I feel less sure about that. Mm -hmm. um, but in any case, just like keep putting out assets to overwhelm the Parisia slowly but surely. One other reason why I would 
probably uh, push the push the Rashida is we are running free Amani. Um, I want yes. to find an Amani as soon as possible. Yeah, I do agree. Especially because we have like we are going to have a second remote. We're going to have an uh, annoying protect uh, important asset remote. We're going to have a scoring remote. Amani is very good in the annoying protect this thing remote um <laughs> yeah and amani is at full power now like i when i yeah. did, like when playing an amani deck i want to get amani online as soon as possible because she's the most powerful when there's no agenda points uh have been scored which makes sense so we want to get her as fast as possible although to be fair like i remember looking at the at the deck list mm -hmm. Um, which I can just pull up here, and seeing that like the console is a pandograph, which is two cost, and then we have four, three, and three costs for breakers, and the rest also doesn't cost anything. So, Amani is surprisingly worse than it would normally be because there is not like a huge target like a Nobkui or more or something big important. So, the best you can hope for is like treasure, or, like bounce of fermenter that has some some tokens on it or something like that. Or just like bounce a three cost thing, and I think I, I didn't, I didn't actively think about this, but I remember that going into the game, I felt that Amani would not play as much as large of a role as it normally does. Mm. But might still be wrong here. I don't know. Okay. But like, if I get an Amani bounce, okay, I guess I get the daily cast, which is still huge. Yeah, yeah fair. Bouncing casts is huge, and bouncing bursts yeah. is huge for us because uh, yeah, we we. Uh, how to put this? Um, our code gate ETRs are important. Yeah, true. Yeah. In any case, we this is what I chose to just take credit yeah. after installing these two. <clears throat> and the runner just decides to pressure us. Um, interesting question, actually. Would you fire the spin doctor here, I guess? What do we have in our archives? Uh, one letter word. No. Yeah, that is also what I chose because... As we want to overwhelm the runner, getting rid of Parisia credits is worth a ton, and getting that spin doctor is not worth no. anything at this point. So no, this drains the Parisia. Uh, using the spin doctor would only give us a bladder worth. Yeah, it's not worth at that point. Like each each spin doctor, in a certain way, represents um, possibly two oppos to me. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, I, yeah. That's the, and so basically we drain two now and we can get the spin doctor back um, and now yeah. in this situation this is better this is better in the long run yeah I, I do agree and also in this specific case it means that uh, both of our econ assets get to survive for a turn because the runner just draws up and installs something uh, as the two credits of Perusia are already used for a spin doctor that we didn't actually care about that much at this point. Mm. So, I do get to res both of them, get some of my resing money back, and see myself faced with this situation. Yep. Uh, what do you do here? Okay. Not to sound as if, as if I'm beating on an old <laughs> drum again, but this is again where I would be very glad with having built a scoring remote. Um, we have options here. Option one, go into the mirror. That, I'm not saying, I'm just considering options first. Mm -hmm. One, go into the Marilyn remote, overwrite the Marilyn. That has the benefits of um, having already an ice there. Put the, what is it called? The sentry. It's not Vasilia. Uh, Tsarevna. You put Tsarevna in front of it. Um, yeah. Threaten. Crypto crash. Yeah, it's okay, especially because they're at seven. They're not going to read the crypto crash likely because there's not a wage workers, and you're probably not going to install a secondary asset. So it it does fun. look more like a Rashida than it does. It's although over installing Marilyn is a choice. It, true, true, true. But maybe we're panicking or something. Like it is a choice, yeah. but. No. Uh, we can go for make new remote crypto crash, uh, put the two eyes in front of it. But that's risky. Um, 
that's risky but a good line we can also do the same and put the Rashida in there and that's probably the line that I would take here yeah honestly looking back at it I'm not happy with the line that I took I would uh, I would go I, I, would, it, like, I don't remember the situation I would I think <laughs> yeah. I would go Rashida um, Mesnichev mm. um Terefna go yeah maybe changing on the basis of what the Rashida install draws us I think exactly like that is also I think what, what I thought I, I think I'm installing Rashida here but I was planning on like semi forking the runner into putting a Rashida on the board so that clicks and time get spent on the Rashida mm -hmm. so that the crypto crash that I can put into a server one is not getting contested because the runner is only kind of at nine credits still, still needs a bus saw and pay a lot of credits to get through here mm -hmm. is it four yeah I think it's three to three to pump one to break so four credits plus the four for bus saw are eight so like a whole lot of the of the runner's turn needs to go into breaking into the server mm -hmm. if they choose to do so and also if they have the bus in hand so i felt that like if they want to do that i'm probably getting my rashida through mm -hmm. because they spend time and credits on that choice and if they don't i get my agenda but looking back at it i think like opening up a second remote which i will do at some point anyway i think i was like not trying to not open a second remote necessarily mm -hmm. i think what i did here was install rashida oh i wish that a let draw mm -hmm. exactly install rashida hope to draw into another asset if i don't ice the rashida and play something else okay but if i draw another asset what i did was install the asset and install the agenda this is a because i did feel Wow, yeah. this is a line. I didn't see this. Yeah. Whew. Because I felt like Messi Chesso does a really good job against Basso. So if they get into the server, they are also losing at least seven credits, likely more. Mm -hmm. So that is also good for me. And that is already enough. And if I can get them, keep them busy with the remotes, mm -hmm. that also means that my econ assets maybe survive a turn or two longer. And all of that seemed fine to me. But I don't know in retrospect if I like the fact that I didn't ice the Rashida. Yeah, but I, I, okay, I can see the keep them busy with my econ assets. I can yeah. see that point, especially when it's, let's say, bladder words, DBSs, blah, 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 yeah. wage workers. I'm not so sure you want to use a Rashida that way. Yeah, that, that, that is also what I'm now like not looking back at it it feels like i i felt that a rashida was kind of a trash somewhat equal to like a bladderboard trash and i don't think it is i think no. especially with henna on the board like even the click doesn't really matter which means that it is only a credit that the runner invests and i think they do still have even though they have only oops only have nine of them i do think they have enough credits to do that i and i, I can see so, yeah. I, I can even i can see the line if you for example have an oppo okay fine yeah i can see that yeah. line but there's no oppo here yeah i i i do agree although i think even if i have an oppo i don't need to use rashida for this because no. some of these will get trashed like these perisha credits need to get used every single turn yep otherwise the perisha is not doing its job so i feel like Oppo is online all the time. Yeah, I feel like you're already you're already presenting them two targets that they yeah. should trash, like the bladder word, which is a known quantity, and the DBS. Yeah, no need to put Rashida into the crossfire. No. Here. Yeah, I I think retrospectively I agree. Uh, so we see the runner playing Sugar Gamble, finding Rashida, trashing it. Mm -hmm. Looking to the other remote, finding a DBS, and deciding against trashing it. Which is really interesting to me. I think I see the point. I think with Hannah on the board, you can do that later. And make me invest two credits into something that fires once. Okay, fair. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. But I do also agree that I would have thought that this is a high priority trash and maybe you do it when you are here to just save the click for later i mean but i think it also means that you're likely just leaving both of the econ assets on the table maybe i don't know 
I mean, it was mentioned on the stream with Aksu and... Yeah. What was it? Aksu and Charlie, I think? No, Aksu and... Uh, Aksu and, uh, and Koda, Cody. Okay, Aksu and Koda. Aksu and Cody, who did a great job, by the way. Um, yeah, I actually watched that this morning. <laughs> so I I also remember that they went over this. Yeah, like they mentioned it as well. Like <laughs> DBS is such an innocuous looking little thing, but often it's, yes. and it, it, it often survives. But sometimes... It's the first thing that needs to go on the table. And I could very well, in this board state, it is the first thing that needs to go on the table, in my opinion. I'm not so fully sure on that, because economy is also such a big thing, especially if you're not like criminal and can take that away artificially. Mm. Any credit that I make passively is one more credit that I can use against you. And so, like, restricting my economic options is also worth quite a lot, similarly to restricting my card options, because none of my cards can be used without a remote. <laughs> like, all of my economic cards need to live in a remote that you probably have access to. So even if you give me all the card choice, if you, if you do manage to keep my economy down, then I think I'm in trouble. Okay. But... On, on the other hand, I do agree with you that it is so hard to keep the economy down. And I, this is something we will see in this game. The runner will not get there. And that's my experience with everything that isn't mulch. Like, anything that doesn't have infinite imp tokens cannot really restrict your economic situation. Yep. Because you have three Bladderworth, three pet campaigns, uh, three um, Marilyns, Rashidas there is so much money coming in you have the balonas that like kind of pay back if you really just score them like there is so much economy going on in the game that with the recursion that you have if the runner just focuses on trashing your economy you just recur the economy and keep it on the table mm. and they will just grind themselves against it is my feeling you can't keep the economy down and i can see why he goes for the bladder word in this case but yep. Like I'm not. This is a line that I haven't really fought through, but it is a absolutely viable choice to just go for the. Eh, I'm just. Or DBS. No, I'm the, the, the decision. Eh, I'm just gonna give him all the money that he needs, but I'm gonna destroy all the utility assets. Um, yeah. Like if I give him all the money, the pings of the bladder words are turned off, so the bladder word it just drips yeah. to one. It's not like there's something in the deck that really leverages on having a, a, a big amount of money. Like, like that is that is true. So I'm not. I haven't really considered that point here, but it is the line of thinking that makes me say DBS is a priority target here. And I guess also if you choose that line, you only trash the DBSs and the Amanis, and you care about this less. I guess also reverse the count is a problem. Eh, um, wage workers. Oh, yeah. True. Ah, that's still a lot of trash. I don't know if you can actually pull that one off either. Yeah, but on the other hand, what is the other choice? You're going to leave all the uh, utility assets? Hmm. Good question. I don't know. I guess you have always the option of just deep diving yourself into a win and just, like, disregarding anything that happens on the board. Like, just Hannah and Perisha to trash one thing each turn mm -hmm. but focus on doing the deep dive it, it might be the correct option but once again i don't want to spend too much time on the runner and i i do think it is valuable here because it's also something that informs what we do as a core yep but i i think we can just uh, leave it here at the <laughs> by saying that it is a difficult choice and none of the options are really good which is i think the reason that we both like these kinds of decks yeah uh they they present like no easy out for the runner. The runner always needs to choose one thing and then <laughs> later on uh, think about whether it was the correct choice or not. Probably that's to, just to go into the, into, it, into it just a bit more. That's probably why, like we've we've discovered that at certain key points I make very different choices. Like I would push for the Rashida, I would hunt for an yeah. agenda, I would play more aggressive. That probably has to do with that you are the stronger technical player. Um, and I like to play a bit more fast and loose, put pressure on my opponent. Like, uh, how to put this? 
Um, like bring them to make mistakes. Yes. Give them opportunities. Yeah. Yes. Like like I am probably not that good at preventing my own mistakes as you are. That's just an honest Thank evaluation. You. <laughs> no, you're the stronger technical player, but. I think I am pretty good, pretty good at presenting difficult situations to the opponent by just yeah. pressuring them and making making them make mistakes. That way, I don't want to say, let's put it in a non-elegant way, pulling them down <laughs> to my level. That's a bit <laughs> that's a bit inelegant. So excuse me if that's <laughs> if that's rude, but no. it gets the point across. I, yeah, I, I I get what you mean. Just like. Uh, Present them with situations when none of you is happy, and you go like, "I think I know this place better than you do." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know how to play misery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tempo. <laughs> okay. Tempo, misery, <laughs> the same word. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> All right. Okay. Back to the case so. at hand. Back to the case at hand, Runner trashes letter word, and I don't remember what. Oh, yeah, installs Nuka to have some option next turn and also get a lead trigger. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And I'm now faced with an interesting option. Like, there is still the crypto crash in the remote. Do you score or don't? That is very interesting. How much money? I guess I also did one more decision. I didn't raise the DBS because at this point I need my money. Yeah, so um, they have to. And, and I, I also I am fine with drawing another agenda that I can, I can actually use at some point. So like even if this draw happens to be below now or something, I'm not sad about that. I think that was the the reasoning behind the DBS. But yeah, let's let's come back to the crypto okay, crash. Okay, so they they have ten euros, so we can drain fully with the crypto crash, which is which is pretty good. It's going to be devastating, but also just takes them down to five at the start of their turn, so it's not as devastating as we want it to be. Um, it makes us use our seamless. This is an interesting one. Yep. Uh, you don't run upgrades, right? No, no, I don't. Okay. If the deck were to run, for instance, a Sansan -San or something, I would yep. be very tempted to make it look like a Sansan. -San. Just make it sit there, make them think yep. it's not a Gen D. Um, yep. wait until I find a wage worker so I don't have to burn the seamless or wait until I find yep. a Namani so it can go for full pot for like the absolutely devastating play yep. uh, basically go balls out yep. on the other hand in this situation knowing this situation knowing that we both have access to the deck list I'm pretty damn sure I would score here um just because there it, is very, there's very little that this can be other than an agenda yes like there is there, do i put a Bellona there that would mean that i have two more in hand or something and so i would be desperate hmm. uh but other than that it is probably something that i can score it somehow um or it's a gaslight and i'm waiting for whether i need an oppo or a self uh, I, i'm waiting whether i need a self or a, or a shipment or something like that but even then, I think I just fetch another oppo here. So I, I, I do agree that if I leave this on the table, it does look like an agenda. Yep. And a shaper on 10 credits is, probably has a way of getting in there. Yep. So I would score here. Yeah. And that is also what I did. Mm. Kind of following the same conclusion. And I also felt that draining 7 credits here, even though I'm draining myself 3 credits and also not installing this Marilyn and not pushing forward... Mm -hmm is still valuable because it makes my pet campaign more likely to stick i still have a dbs to to choose from and the runner like has only perisha going for for him like the daily cast is now paying the final two credits and then that's it mm -hmm. there is not much more economy left so taking away seven credits is actually huge because it means that two assets might get to survive yeah that otherwise wouldn't i agree with this decision like I would be I would be tempted to go make it look like an upgrade because but because we don't have upgrades I feel the score is correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I could see the fact that if you have Sansen, thing you might install a second ice on there and go like yeah my Sansen is safe now and if I need it I can use it if I have ten more credits. Yeah, I I, I agree, but I think with open decklist and the decklist as it is this 
and to be still clear, feels correct to me. Yeah, and to be clear, I'm not saying that I would do it, but I would seriously consider <laughs> that line. But we don't have yeah. that option, yeah. so the line is clear. Yeah. Yeah. So Rana takes the final two credits of daily cast, draws a bunch with Nuka. They luck into a sure gamble. A, a definitely, the sure gamble helps a lot. SMC simul chip but don't get the the lead value so at least something for us yep and importantly they don't touch her assets true the two perisha credits for the first time i think in this game <laughs> are not getting used which is important yeah which also gives me the money to go and res a dbs i think because i felt like at this point i need options mm -hmm. and i get options in the form of uh, a spin knocker oh, or a wait, wage wait, 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 by the way, by the way, uh, yep. how much money are they at? They are at eight. Yes. Mm -hmm. They know it's a DBS. Yes. Uh, let's, let's not go into it too much, but using Hana, using Parisha would have been maybe worth yeah, considering. Fair, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I guess. I guess being at six is not that much worse than being at eight with Oppo only giving two tags. So mm -hmm. might be a good investment. But I think for that, you need to really t tackle the utility from this point on. Like leave the pet campaign and tackle the utility that is coming down. Yep. And I can tell you like from these two cards, I'm taking the wage workers to just have more utility to put on the table and to maybe push forward with. What was the other option? I wasn't paying attention. Uh, uh, spin Doctor. Oh, easy. Easy choice. Wage workers. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and I think I just put it down on the table and I draw into Namami. Hello. So the question is, what do we do here? Uh, this is interesting. I want the Amani online. Um, mm -hmm. I want it on the board. Um, we can install it naked. We can install it in server one. Hmm. And also, we have a Marilyn that we really like, because we're low on money. And we have enough ice to make the second remote. <laughs> that is a theme that keeps coming back this game, the choice between... <laughs> That is, a, I'm sensing a theme. Um, I would go... Amani naked, Marilyn in server one. Interesting. I I can see why, mm -hmm. but I but I did not feel like icing assets anymore. I felt like I'm winning the economic war at this point. Mm -hmm. I got to res a DBS, and I'm thinking that like the pet campaign is going first if anything goes, mm -hmm. and the runner is kind of spending money that they don't have at this point. Mm -hmm. Two sure gambles are through, one daily cast is through, they need to find the rest. Um, I felt pretty confident in being able to outpower them, especially with the wage workers that cost four, mm -hmm. and the money that costs four, and Marilyn that costs three. So I, I decided, I think, oh. let's see, but I think I, I just installed all of them naked on the board. Because I felt like at this point, I, I don't really have the money to rest two eyes, especially like I'm only drawing my big eyes here. Mm -hmm. Once again, if I've found a ping or something or a VSA, this might look differently. But like I, my centrals are at some point will get attacked by deep dive. Mm -hmm. So I need to be able to rest at least one of these. Mm -hmm. I If I push through a score, I need to also rest a message chest throw. And I don't have the money right now. So I might just like keep pedaling, keep just staying where I am. Mm -hmm. Put three assets on the board, get one trashed. Put three on the board, get one trashed. The runner doesn't have more economy to trash more than one. So as long as I can keep doing this, and if the DBS stays, I can definitely keep doing this, mm -hmm. I should be fine. Yeah. And I think this is also, I, I, maybe also one last point. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is also why I like NEH more than R+. Because the R+, deck, once the fundraisings get trashed, can't do this. Because you just don't have to draw regularly enough mm -hmm. you're playing a different sort of tempo game and i feel like this is a stronger and uh, a harder to um one that is harder to keep in check but yeah go ahead i agree neh is harder to contain which is 
Why in a vacuum? I like in a vacuum is an important signif- uh, qualifier. Mm-hmm. In a vacuum, I like the NEH variant of Canel more as well. But we don't play in a vacuum, so <laughs> that is a funny sentence. Um, <laughs> Luckily, your spacesuit would be free and comfortable. <laughs> Side note, um, no two things. One, especially because of the economic situation, I would, like I just mentioned, seriously consider protecting the Maryland, but I can see Mm -hmm. why you're not doing as such. And yeah, maybe I'm being influenced by your play patterns now. (laughs) Maybe, I'm not sure. And but the second thing You see me play too much. But now I'm being influenced by this by this particular game. But the other thing is, um, and I'm pretty sure you have a good reason for it. But it's a good thing to go into because it is significant. Why did you not uh, res the wage workers? True. Uh, the reason is quite simple. I don't have the money right now. I I feel like if I res it, mm-hmm. the next turn of the runner will look like pointing Hana at the wage workers and not doing anything else. If I don't res it, mm-hmm. there is a chance that the Wage Worker just survives. Mm-hmm. Because I now have two assets with Amani and Wage Workers that I don't need to insta res. Mm-hmm. I can just use them when they are useful. And so I, I keep the hidden information it, at my side. And Ronamad might, might, might just like run the Merit and trash that and leave the other two be. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that is more important. Because once I invest the two credits, the thing is gone and I just got a credit, uh, I, a click out of it. And paying two credits for a click at this point is not an action that I would likely take if no. it was just on my basic action card or something. No. Um, In this particular situation, the question basically is, is the hidden information worth one yeah. credit? And to me, because we would click for a credit likely uh, if we True. raise the wage, exactly. work, the wage workers. And it's worth more than a single credit to me. If you had another installable assets, I would definitely res here personally. Yeah, especially if it was like a blender burst or something that yep. is able to make me money. Yep. Then I then I think I agree. But since I didn't, I felt like keeping it secret was the better option. And also, if the runner just runs it and trashes it, I'm also still fine. I, it did its job of being a forecast thing that I needed to trash. Yep. So I'm fine with this. Yeah, exchange. I fully agree. Basically, in that case, they're down four. We haven't lost anything. Cool. We're yep. okay with this. Exactly. Um, so let's see what they do. Mm-hmm. They Hannah it, obviously. <laughs> so good thing we didn't rest, I guess. Uh, use the stone ship. Install a cleaver. Take a credit. Take another credit. And take another credit. Interesting thing prepared. here. I would make uh, a mental note of them checking the leftmost, checking basically the first install. I would it make is a something note. that I did, yeah. It, I it didn't cross my mind yesterday, mm-hmm. and looking back at it today, it's. I think there is a pattern here. I think it was always the leftmost, maybe. Uh, I I also just right now noticed it, and I think if I was playing in paper, it would be definitely something that I noticed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it being on Jnet makes things weird, and I sometimes miss these kinds of cues. But I I do fully agree. Like noting this kind of things are it can be valuable. In the future, yep. if somebody goes more often for the for the middle asset, if presented with three or something like that, and I mean they aren't the same install, which is a important thing yes. to be aware of. Yeah. Like the first yeah. install is an install that we also get the NEH draw on, which makes it a different install. So it's not like they just check three things that are the same. No, they check they have yeah. three options. And one of those is a thing that we want, that we are fine with putting it on the table because we get an, get 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 value from it. And two other yeah. things we also want to have on the table, but they're they're different. Yeah, like for example, I don't think a Rashida would make it into the first install if no. you install three, because you might draw something else and then keep the Rashida for some safer option later on. Exactly. I, I fully agree there. Yeah. Um. So we raise our Marilyn. And look at DBS and see a Bladderworth and a Marilyn. Uh, I don't actually remember what I did. I think Is there a difference for you? Eh, it doesn't really matter that much. 
I think basically, do we have an oppo? No, we don't have an oppo. Cool. I go, no. I'll go for the Marilyn. Interesting. Seems I did as well. Hmm. I, I, I think today I would have gone for the Bladderworth, but it seems that it. I, I think it's pretty close. And I would assume that I just install it. Oh right, and I find a gaslight. Mm -hmm. uh, gaslight goes into the remote. I would assume you agree with me there. I agree with you there. And just to circle back to the Bladderworth Marilyn decision. I would also, for instance, I would also choose the better word if we don't have a Marilyn running yet. Hmm, interesting. Because of DBS. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense because you get to influence your deck more than you do yep. right now. But, but we're breaking DBS ordering anyhow in this case, so having yep. a secondary DBS, fine. They're not contesting, we're probably not... That is an interesting point. I don't think I've ever made a decision based on that, but I, I fully agree with your your conclusion there. Oh, I play into it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the question is what do you do with your last click here? Um, I'd be tempted to ice the remote, but nothing nothing <laughs> feels really good here. I think in normal games I would like to draw here, just to have more options later on. Mm -hmm. uh, in this particular game I think I took a credit, because I felt that the credit game is really close, and if I don't have anything better to do, drawing puts them closer to lap draws, so I might just stick at three cards in hand and slowly credit up, which will be important, because they also started to credit up as well. Mm -hmm. So we are at the same kind of rate of gaining credit, so I'm totally fine clicking for credits here as I don't have anything better to do. Like, installing an ice would be probably something I can't dress any anyways, because all of my ice costs four or more. I guess the Enigma costs three. But still, I can't dress, like, one or two. I can't dress really, realistically more than one of them. So uh, I felt that might as well just take the time and take the credit here. Eh, installing, like, installing a second ice on the remotes is basically, to me, preparing for a score. Um, yeah, true makes our scoring turn more flexible like for instance i don't know like we draw into the an agenda um late yeah. like like second click or something and then we can still yeah. defend it it's it's really yeah. hypothetical also yeah this way it looks like maybe a gen D that we can't protect that well and they might go in eh, it's not, yeah. not the worst thing like they're gonna pay through yeah. the nose to see a gaslight eh. yeah Although one thing that I didn't notice yesterday, uh, they have access to turbine. So if they fetch um, bus saw mm -hmm. and get the turbine, this message as well looks really sad. Yes. But they take your credit, run the new remote, find the Marilyn, Don't. decide not to trash it, run the other thing, find the Amani. Obviously, decide to trash it yep. because it would be devastating to leave it around, mm -hmm. and keep clicking for credits. And this gives me the gaslight. And I think we both agree here that going for an Oppo is a good choice here, right? Yes. Mm. Yeah. That I, I think there is no big question around it. It always feels a bit painful because you're like, I want to use the gaslight for the one ofs and I'll draw into my yeah. free into one of my free copies of Oppo, but Exactly. But if this is what the game presents you, then this is what you take. This is what we have to do. Looking into a DBS and the wage workers. Um, wage workers. I, definitely. Uh, installing that. Finding a reverse account. Mm, and I think this was actually an interesting decision point. Uh, I think what I did go for was to res the wage workers, ice it, install the um, reversed accounts, and then play the oppo. Mm -hmm. But I did feel that this leaves me somewhat vulnerable if they decide to just go for it, don't detag, or like detag with Hana even, and tackle these servers because I I do know that I can't res both of these eyes. No. Um, the other option would be to not rest the wage workers, just leave it around, but I, I don't know. Do you do you like the second ice at this point? What is the what is the ice on the wage workers? Uh, it's a ref now actually. 
Yeah. Okay, we've definitely committed to server 12 being our um, extra remote. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I don't think I would have taken this line. Mm -hmm. Like I would have used the Tarefna differently. I would have maybe kept it for a central against deep dive. Maybe put it on server one. Hmm. We're on seven credits, right? Yeah, seven. Yeah. Eh, so we can't rest both. That, exactly. That is what makes it difficult, I think. And I kind of felt like this Tarefna is more just fake. Mm -hmm. I don't know if, if if like the first action that he took was just run server 12 if I even would res this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, I felt like this was just, this was looking like a ping without being a ping was my, my thinking. So hypothetical, hmm. we, we oppo him, he's got two tags. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's basically two clicks, but he also has henna, so that's a thing to take into account. Yeah. Um, if you don't. But to be fair, once we get once we get rid of henna, that's all henna's in the deck. So getting yeah. the runner to actually use the henna is a huge tempo swing for us because this means that they now lack a click in every single turn. Agreed. We really want to get rid of henna. The more that I think about it, the more that I feel that I would maybe go for what you're doing, but put the wage workers on server one again, or maybe mm -hmm. the second mist, which uh, also doesn't feel really optimal, but yep. really pressure them because we're gonna, you're really pressuring their clicks. Uh, you're pressuring two clicks yep. with the oppo, you're pressuring a third click with uh, the wage workers the rest, which they have to deal with. And then there's a fourth, uh, then they only have a single click left, we leave the henna out of it for a second. And they have to use it to check the remote, because it really looks like you're putting a jenny in a, let's say, a ping something else remote. I think I like that line. Mm-hmm. Especially because we have a ton of econ running, we have DBS, we, we're pretty much set up. We also have two, we have uh, at least two spin doctors left in the deck itself, so we can yeah. get wage workers back. I think we're okay here. It, I would take a yeah. different line. Yeah, but it might be. But it's a difficult situation. I think it's a difficult one here. But I, but I, but I am inclined to agree with you because I, I know that my ice placement sometimes gets around to bite me and I think this is one of those situations. Like the fact that I'm installing this ice without intending to res it feels wrong to me and but I I I do see the advantage of having message chest for and saying that hey I have an end run. You do have to find your bus saw and ideally also fetch your turbine for this to make any sense to get through. Mm -hmm. And afterwards I'm probably not resing the other message chest for until I get rid of your turbine stuff. Yeah. And I just like Anyhow, like yeah. making it look like he has to go into the remote. Because it does. Yeah. If you go, if in this board state, uh, throw an oppo to obviously slow him down, res wage workers, put something in remote, protect it. That really looks like you're about to make a score. Yeah, that, that is true. Uh, that that makes it much more likely to be a score than what I'm presenting here. Mm -hmm. and, and because we present a score, we're pressuring him, we're drawing him into a mistake, we're drawing him into a trap. Like, if he doesn't pressure it, to me, we have we have a lot of win here. Like, all nearly all the scenarios yeah. are good for it. Like, if he doesn't touch the wage workers, which is very unlikely, but if he doesn't touch it... Uh, and he doesn't go for the remote, we can devastate him with the reversed accounts, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Like, we have a good of, lot of good scenarios here. Yeah, yeah, I, I can definitely see that. And I think I'm I'm presenting, I think I'm, I'm generally presenting less threats than you typically do in, in, in your board states. I, I think I, I can agree with that. Anyhow, in, in for the sake of... Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Getting to the end of this replay at some point. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see what Ron has to do. No, all, all good. I think, uh, I, I at least hope that people like this kind of deep dives. But, uh, we're yeah. going deep. Try, trying to, exactly, <laughs> but, but trying to keep things moving forward. Uh, Ron actually decides to overclock here. And I, I think it's pretty clear that I can't res this. No. Uh, there is just nothing that I am gaining from this. And also, I'm kind of forcing them to choose a breaker in the dark. Which might open up options later. Yeah, this is fine. So they go for the bus saw and actually see the reverse accounts. And I don't think they were expecting this, but anything else, an agenda or something. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was pretty happy with uh, pulling an overclock and uh, an actual credit from the credit pool uh, with this reverse account. I think this was. And especially like protecting all of my other assets, which can now keep taking for me, was uh, huge. I think mm-hmm. so. I was pretty happy with this exchange in the end. Uh, Runner continues to just take credits and remove the tags, keeping the hammer alive, which is also huge for them. Yeah, but on the other hand, they're at a single credit. Yeah, but upside and downside. Uh, and I think like this is the this is the turning point which I've mentioned like i don't know six turns ago where i felt that in the end i will win the economic battle around assets i will get them to stick and i we have reached the point where these are now sticking yes i'm getting three econ assets and the dbs taking every single turn and it is too difficult for them to keep up with controlling all of that um yeah we see the choice between a ping and an oppo given that they just trashed something i'm definitely taking the oppo here yep easy choice uh, and I, I i guess the question is what do you do here before playing the oppo because whatever you do you're probably doing two times more <laughs> i would draw i did the same just draw three times yep play the oppo yep i agree with and, this and, and once again, I don't think, like, even if I had threat, I don't think I would choose the five credits to give two tax option because I feel like this this puts me in a difficult situation if they manage to, like, overclock a Marilyn, tr- Perisha, the, the, the pet campaign, and just give me two more credits. I don't think I'm winning that game. So I was kind of really happy with just putting two tax out every single time for just two credits. I think that is the much more valuable option here. Value Oppo is a good play. Yeah. Hardening news was never this, uh, this, this, this granular. Uh, it's not entirely true, but that's. I mean, if we go into yeah. that, we're gonna be here for two hours more. <laughs> true. I shouldn't talk to you no, about no, no, uh, the differences of hardening news and Oppo. Yeah, but also um, value Oppo is a thing. Like, like the, for instance, yeah. they're at eighteen credits, and you throw an Oppo or you throw a hardening news for twelve yeah. or something. It is a thing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um. So they decided to draw a card. Are forced to use the hand to remove a tag. Take a credit. Remove the other tag. Yep. And. I am really, really happy with this boss. We deck. are really pleased right now. Yeah. Although we are giving them a let draw. Oh, yeah. You can't have everything. Yeah. Uh, DBS shows us an Amani or a Spin Doctor. Um, once again, I feel the option is quite easy. Yep. Uh, the Amani is just huge value. I would have kept. And I would have kept a spin if. Uh, really. No. It, I in would, this situation. I would have kept a spin if we didn't have a spin in your hand. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm not. I'm not sure about that. I, I think I still would take the Armani just because it does more, and we don't really need the spin at this point, especially with Rashida in hand. Oh. But yeah, I, I. I could. I could see the point if we. If this hand looks differently, then ma- there is maybe a world where we take the spin doctor. But I'm, I think like my line of thinking is very easy. There's two oppos in the bin. Fair, fair. Uh, I, th- I think I'm seeing this as a point where the oppos did their job. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily need to already get the runner into tag hell. The runner is already in a very tight economic spot, and I can just start pushing through agendas rather than through tags fair fair and also that's where amani gets in because then i can put out the money force either trash on the amani which 
costs even more credits or get a bounce through stuff like that mm -hmm. i think at this point i just installed armani find the wage workers um install the doctor just for good measure though i i kind of mm, yeah i think this is changeable install all oh, right i got the wage workers already ticking this is why mm -hmm. it is fine to install three things and then install rashida into server one um I would have maybe not installed one of the assets and added the ping on the remote, but that's style. Yeah, now that I look at it, I do tend to agree. Probably like keep the spin doctor in hand, Probably. but I don't need it yet. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I could definitely also see that. I think I was still like not valuing the turbine in the heap as much as I should because it is capable of getting in here much cheaper than I was giving it any credit for. Mm -hmm. I was kind of discount... I, I I was not thinking about the three credits discount on the symbol chip and kind of felt like, yeah, they don't have the money to do all of that, but they actually do. But yeah, they start with Dirt Laundry and Archives. Mm -hmm. uh, actually play a pinhole because they feel like the wage workers is a problem here, which... I think in certain bot states is definitely the case. In this one, since this is Rashida and not a crypto crash, it is not true. But I think this is a decent line in many situations. And then just trade it up a bit more. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, this was a funny situation where they credit up. Mm -hmm. And I felt like they credited up because they were trying to finagle a, a lat trigger. So I did res my, my <laughs> spin up and then realized, uh, no, I was at three, now I'm at five. Okay. I actually didn't, not a, like, this was not a mistake. I should have probably rest this anyways, but I did do it very quickly after the last click and then was like, oh, wait. Oops. Um, yeah, I, that's in chat as well. Um, but yeah, we see two Marylands and the tomorrow's headline. Yep. Um, I think at this point it's definitely, we have won the economic race, so we can afford to not have one Maryland. Mm -hmm. I think I definitely take the headline here. And uh, also have a Rashida going, so we have a lot of options. Uh, we see BSA, Bladderbird, Crypto Crash, and DBS. Any particular opinions on what to bottom? Oh, that's an interesting one. Hmm. Can actually zoom in. Wait. Yeah. A second. yeah. Um, I, forgot to I forgot the technology. Nice. To me, it's either. This is interesting. I think it's a crypto crash, even though I really want to score it, but we already have a headline uh, to prepare for. Yeah. Maybe the sane option would be to bottom crypto crash. What I decided was that my DBS is one of the lower lower important targets because there's still a Namani and the wage workers out mm -hmm. and I want to have pressure options so I actually bottomed the DBS and took the other three cards fair um, what I continued doing was uh, uh, more strangeness which is um, after my mandatory draw and stuff mm -hmm. install the tomorrow's headline Ooh. And, and <laughs> this is one thing that we already talked about short briefly uh before recording this uh, -huh. uh this this was an interesting line that i took yeah. once again because i i think if i had saw the if i had seen the pattern that uh, he was running the first thing i put down i should have probably not done this mm -hmm. but i did feel that the first install is the one that you don't check typically so if i'm putting down the tomorrow's headline on the board i'm doing it now mm -hmm. i can see the line I'm not sure. I I'm yeah. not sure I would have taken it here either. But to me, this is a decision you make on instinct, and yeah, my instinct isn't firing here. But also, this isn't my game, so it's not like <laughs> no, 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 it's not like my instinct is saying no. My instinct is like it's just in neutral mode. You, it's not saying yes or yeah, no. Yeah, you, you, you're not you're not invested in the game in the sense that you have a feeling for what your opponent might. Yes, do. this is definitely. I I do agree. This is something that you do based on what you think your opponent's headspace is in. 
and what you think their op the options that they would regard and disregard would be. Mm -hmm. So I, I fully agree. And I, I felt like this was a fine point to do this kind of move because if they run the tomorrow's headline, they get a tag, which in this economic situation is still pretty devastating for them. Yep. And and I, uh, yeah. it's a tag plus an Amani trace. I like the decision. I like the move. Now, I don't remember, but what I'm really curious after is what you did with the crypto crash now. <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, I feel like if, if he goes and trashes Armani, mm -hmm. he's on zero credits as given, or I was also thinking maybe an overclock, something like that, or a, um, a creative commission to bounce back, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But if you go trash the Armani and then steal tomorrow's headline because you, for some reason, feel that checking those two remotes, you're still in a bad spot because you now have no credits left and the tag. So I felt that in either situation, I probably am fine here. I'm probably getting out of this fine. I can actually afford to give away two points because the deep dive is far enough away mm -hmm. that the two points don't directly hurt me here. But I see many situations where I just get the headline through and that just seals the game on the spot. I'll, um, I'll say two things, because yep. there's so much I want to say about this board state, but, but, <laughs> but, but we also have to get to the end. So like I'm, I'm, trying to, <laughs> like I'm trying to measure myself a bit, but I'll say two things. One, I would really want the second Amani on the board to be sure that we can hit him with an Amani fire if he finds the tomorrow's headline. That's the yep. first thing. And the second thing is, just on a personal note, like instinct is really hard to read an opponent's instinct. That's like like there's no math to it, and it's really hard yeah. to get it across on JNet. But for instance, I'm gonna go really personal for a second. At Italian Nets last year, I sat across from an mm -hmm. opponent in the first round, and super nice person who I hung out with, etc. And he's like, "Oh, it's you. I heard you have a really mean deck. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to this." Like, I could see he was nervous, and I saw an opening hand with an Aries, and I was like, yep. Because I just saw he was nervous, and I was like, yep, this, yeah. this is happening. It's, he, will, he will play too cautiously, and you will get this Aries through. Yep, you can read it. It's a thing. Yeah. yeah. No, there was definitely... I think, that, I think that beginners are too much into the reading opponents, because there is also a lot that you can't read, and a lot of just random choice and there's also a lot of randomness that i try to employ in my game mm -hmm. to just like avoid being vulnerable that way mm -hmm. so i i might like roll a die and then decide on that whether i run your remote or not or which remote i run and which i don't stuff like that to just not have a pattern but i do fully agree that there are patterns that you can use at a certain spot especially if there is something on the line because people will play differently if there's something on the line yep. and they they need to win this game they will play more cautiously than they would and then they probably should. And you can start to abuse that. Similar to this, like I, this was the second game we were like, I don't know, two hours into our match or something, or like into our two matches. So there is a lot online. This is the semifinals of a big like testing team versus testing team kind of event. So um, I feel that you wouldn't expect me to put out naked agendas when I'm this far ahead already. Like I, the game is turning into my favor. Why should I go into this risk? But I felt that if I go into this risk now, I'm seeding the game right now, whereas there are still options for my opponent. Yep. I, I still am not... I didn't land the 4 tag oppo and have this self-growth already applied once or twice. Like I'm not at that state yet, so I might still lose, especially against a deep dive deck. So pushing here felt correct to me. I fully And also agree. then then drawing the second Amani with the NEH draw was just like icing on the cake. Yep. Uh, I think I, yeah, I rest the wage workers, put the second Amani down, and put the crypto crash into remote. Ooh. Because I did feel that the second part of my thought was that if they get one agenda, I get the other. Fair. I, I see very little games where he steals the headline, trashes the wage workers, and then does something else like I, I felt that either you end up with a with a tag and that's bad for you and you have to remove it and but you will not have enough tempo to also tackle the wage workers so i felt that i'm pretty safe here to score a crypto crash Agreed. at the end but of the what day what i'm wondering now is does the ping go on the remote 
Uh, no, actually, Mason Chancellor goes on there. Oh, okay. Still, looking back at the turbine thing, I think this should be a ping because both of them do the same job against once a turbine is on the table. Yeah. But getting a turbine on the table is actually not that easy and gives you a lot of bouncing targets. So, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, that's fair. It is difficult to say, but looking back, it should probably have been a ping. I think I was also thinking about putting the ping on one of those other centrals. Uh, yeah, but this might be a mistake. Yeah, not sure. I, I, but yeah anyhow i discard the bladder worth because i feel like at this specific situation i have more than enough tools in my hand and i don't need one more trip econ nah. and hand over the turn to the runner runner plays a diesel runs the wage workers actually mm -hmm. making me sad because now i've actually lost the thing <laughs> and then credits up and plays a daily cast Oof. You know the feeling of what is coming next yes, and how good I this is. I know what's was. about to happen. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, take take your lead draw, this is fine. DBS shows me another spin doctor because we have also shuffled quite a bit with it with the Maryland's. Not sure what I take here, I think I take the spin doctor. Advance the thing, rest, the rest thing. that money, oh. score, <laughs> uh, have a little bit of trigger, and then bounce the freshly installed daily cast and leave the runner with attack, which is just... Sorry for the noises, but this is like, welcome to hell. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was one of the best case situations that I could see from this point onwards. Yeah, fair. Um... Runner credits up, removes the tag, takes a credit just to be safe against self growth, which would just finish the devastation. Uh -huh. Like, if I get a self growth program here it through, both of the breakers are gone, and that's it. That's game. Then it's over. Yep. Yeah. So, once again, no action. Runner gets the draw. We see a Bologna in the Merlin. Easy choice. Which is? The Bologna. Okay, we take the balloon. What do we do with it? Ah, <laughs> we push it. <laughs> we push it. Do we? Why would we? Where? Why would we not push it? Where do we push it? In the remote. In this one? Yes. I did. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I fully agree. Like, we don't care about those points. We're winning. It's fine. Exactly. <laughs> we have an Amani. This like was, This was exactly my, my point of thinking. I, I did the thing was I saw the two cards and I felt that if I spend too much time here I'm also giving away something. Yeah. So this decision needs to happen somewhat quickly yep. for it to seem natural. Mm -hmm. It is still weird that I'm over installing something that I had there, but maybe it's I don't know. No, it can't be the gaslight. I I don't even know what this would be. I think this definitely should scream points in the bin right now but it looks really which, off it it does it does but if i'm doing it quickly then it looks less off maybe i mean and so i yeah. saw the game without open hand info so yes. i didn't know what this was and, and i don't i don't particularly recall this moment so you did it really fast it didn't it didn't look like <laughs> yes. anything i was also doing different stuff so but it didn't register yeah. But I really like this. Like, I thought yeah. the Crypto Crash was an archive due to a discard or something. Nope. <laughs> it was It was in the summer before, and I could have chosen to go to six points. I chose to no. try to go to seven instead. I agree with so that line. So double, double advance this. Yep. Uh, because I do feel like even if you get the turbine off, you're not having the money to steal this Bologna. There are still two ice that you need to break. This is two credits. You spend a credit on, on, on turbine... I don't see a way of you getting in here, even with like, but <laughs> even with like, overclock the laundry and mm -hmm. gamble in hand. This this does look differently. Yep. And I I was I was pretty overconfident in what I said after a while. After he played, uh, <laughs> he did play the laundry, and he did choose to go to archives. Yeah, I did see this turn, and I did start sweating at a certain point. <laughs> yeah uh i was still happy with this because 
he didn't expect the agenda there. Mm. Otherwise, he should definitely fire this on server 4 or something. Something that I can't trash immediately. Um, because this way, I did get a bounce. Yep. And the bounce was really impactful. <laughs> and he goes like... Good play. I like that a lot. So <laughs> even my opponent was agreeing with your sounds on the turn before. Um, <laughs> um, but now I I said what was going on in my mind, which is that I literally saw no line that he could take to win from here. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he decided to prove me wrong and definitely had a chance to win this game, yep. which, yeah, I, I did not expect. No, same. Um... I do still think you need this exact combination of cards in hand to get there, mm -hmm. but he did. So, and I, I, I went through like some of the combinations that or some of the things that might happen from one credit, and I didn't end up with enough credit to steal a Bologna and threaten the win somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I spent some time thinking. Goes on R and D. Uh, I decide to res because I do have the money to res one Messner chest for, and that's already enough with the Bologna and him having to install the buzzsaw. Yep. But once again, I'm I'm getting bitten by the fact that my central's ice does not end the run. <laughs> this was something that happened to me at, at Worlds as well, and something that happened here as well. I should probably at some point spend some time to install an end run ice on here to fully close out games that i get with bouncing stuff with amani yeah i mean we've gone the ice placement has been a recurring theme i think yeah. my board state my ice wise my board state would have looked quite different i yeah. think because i don't recall any agendas being in hq for no. longer than a turn HQ the was entire... complete yeah i pretty sure i would have had two ice on r d yeah maybe a Tsarevna on hq just to make it annoying yeah. and taxing during the yeah. uh, deep dive yeah. turn but mainly just especially there's a DJ, there's a dj fenris in the list like having it on hq can't hurt exactly exactly and basically focus the rest on the scoring remote that's maybe yeah. what i would do yeah and it's definitely something that is on my mind that i just because I'm still playing very few games in... I, I've played this deck like twice between Worlds and now. Mm. So uh, this is something that I haven't figured out, but this is something that I need to work on. Like the ice placement here is definitely coming back to bite me. This ice does not say end to run. No. And it does also not say like you can't get in again. <laughs> like two net damage is still fine for the runner if they are not going for any deep dive stuff. So yeah. And also like... It, it, personally, I don't like Tsarevna. Like I was, I was being stubborn at Worlds and had one Tsarevna, but that was me. Yeah, yeah, I, I can definitely also see that Tsarevna does a lot for you when it fires early, but it is liability, and this is one of the games where we see the liability. Mm. So every subroutine fires, we hit a sure gamble and a bus saw. Uh, I decide to draw, mm -hmm. and there was actually a degree mill on top, which I'm pretty happy to put to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, and I find a self growth, which is also nice to have. But I don't, <laughs> I don't imagine that this game goes any longer. Like this, Bellona will not get stolen. I thought. Um, and Runner gets in, and actually steals the Bellona from top. <laughs> and I was like, "Huh, okay." Now, if there is a the third crypto crash on top of R and D, I just lose here. Yep. Now we're really sad. Yep. Uh, he actually takes the credit and overclocks on R and D to also open up the chance of finding a Bologna yep. and stealing that. This was a good. And I did line. not expect. It was definitely a good line. It was slightly worsened by the fact that uh, he did choose to. It seems that he that it is a may to use Pichasau, mm -hmm. and people pointed out, I think, in stream and later on to me that this might have been a mistake. But I don't think I even thought about this because I just bottomed the degree mill, so I didn't even consider that this was a thing but Hold up. you want to have two you want to have two installed cards at this point taking the click means that you can't steal the green mill oh really yeah ah. because 
This is, this is the second time the creature saw fires, then it goes back to hand. Yeah, just now I, I was, like, just now my face was really close to the monitor trying to read a card that I've never <laughs> touched in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, if you if you use this more than once to gain a click, it comes back to your hand, which mm -hmm. in Ari typically means that it also goes back onto the board somehow, but in this case uh, it doesn't, so you're only on one card. Okay. Once again, don't call one me. fateful access. Important, yep. important thing, don't call me over to analyze the Shaper game. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think we have other people for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have you for that. Uh, I would say me and Anton are definitely uh, the people for Shaper. Although I have not successfully played a Shaper game ever since the, the Automated Initiative came out. So Fair. I don't know, maybe also don't, don't ask me. Anyhow, Runner decides to run HQ. Funnily enough, there's no agenda in HQ, but I still raise the ice because why not? And, and that's win it. the game from here by scoring the Bologna. But I did not think that the runner might even steal a Bologna. No. And the runner put himself into a position where he might have stolen two. And I, I was very surprised that there is a combination of cards that gets you there. Yeah. But yeah, luckily enough, the, the luck this time was on, on my side. So top of R&D was safe. And I won the game this way. Yeah, this is the turn that I really, 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 really started sweating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I'm still, I think I'm still pretty happy with the decision of putting Bologna in there. I, I, I mean, you seem to agree. Yeah. I think I need to push now because there are still like some off chances that I might lose. Because at, at the beginning of this turn, the runner is on still all of their breakers. Mm hmm there is a turbine in the bin and the symbol chip on the table. So, like, my ice doesn't necessarily do the thing that I want it to do. Mm -hmm. So, while I am still ahead, I probably need to raise a mess in the chest. So, I need to raise the central ice and then I'm down 12 credits and then I'm at one credit. So, like, this is, this is, not, this is not a one game at this point. So, like, pushing a bit prematurely maybe here is I think still the correct way because the like as we see the runner has access to 14 credits mm -hmm. which which is more than enough to close out the game maybe uh, especially there is one deep dive in the bin but there's still one deep dive in the game so it, if you click on the nuka and find the second deep dive I think you might just like especially if I put the gender here but if I don't uh, I think there are there are situations where you just like randomly find one in HQ and R and D and then deep dive your way into five more points and so, I th I think this was still a good line to take. I fully agree with the Bologna push. Like like yeah, I fully agree because we have the upper hand, we can push it. Like even if they get to it, they're they're gonna be so far behind. But I don't think yeah. they would get to it. So I fully agree with the push. Yeah, but I was I was very overconfident and then very much proven wrong when he played that combination of cards that got him to maybe steal a second Bologna from R&D. Yeah. It was a good push. But yeah. I don't think you need to doubt the push. The push was a very, very logical decision. It made sense. Yeah. Yeah. But I was thinking of you and I, I felt that you might do the same choice whereas the other people in our testing group might not i think they would have chosen significantly different routes throughout this game that would never place them in a spot where this makes sense i i, I think i've got the feeling i think if they found themselves in the situation they might also do this but uh i think us two are the ones that are most likely to find themselves in this spot yeah but i like that personally Personally, that's a spot that I'm fine with. I like being in the aggressive yeah. spot and just being in the driver's seat and presenting them difficult puzzles the whole time. Like, how yep. do I solve this situation? Yep. It was a good game. You and played well. Thank you. I was, I was pretty happy with how this was going. And I felt that even if I find somehow lose from this point, like, this is still so much fun to just, like, be in this bot state and just make these kind of decisions. I, I just love how this deck plays out. Yep. I mean, you don't have to convince me. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I mean, to me, uh, this, this to me, it, this is going to sound so bad. To me, this even feels a bit tame, but 
it's still <laughs> it's still it's really well it is quite fair it is very fair very the, to, to, to be fair i didn't get to pull off the crypto crash plus amani yeah. once the deck does that it, that is really ugly yeah but that it's is... but it's a single really specific trick other than that it's yeah. really fair it's just a complete like it's an eco, it's an it's an economic slugfest but other than that yeah. it's super fair yeah and to be fair it's only true if the runner decides to tackle the economy which he did in this game and that's why for so many turns we both like struggled to find some economic footing but there are also games where the runner just decides to go for their strong win condition like triple deep dive sable stuff like that mm -hmm. and those games play definitely a lot different yeah those play very differently like you can allow yeah. yourself to yeah you get all your tools but they also get faster to their to their end state yeah and their and their end state is really strong. Like yep. deep dive is a huge problem for this deck. If the runner has ten credits and deep dives, that might just be six points on the spot there. And if they already touch something else, that is just game. Agree. But on the other hand, that's why we have Amani and we have free copies yeah. of Amani. Yeah, exactly. And if, if the runner doesn't contest that, that, that probably means that one Amani got to fire early and brought the runner to a stumble, hopefully. Yep. And also we have Crypto Crash, so basically we are yeah. forcing them to interact. And that's why I like, like, okay, Crypto Crash is a story yeah. of its own. Like, I like the agenda, but <laughs> you can see, I can see how it feels really bad and there's points against it. I can see the, the thing. Amani, to me, yeah. is a very good, very, we might have to talk, have a talk about the numbers, but to me it's a very... <laughs> welcome effect in that runner it forces the runner to interact yeah. with you which i think is important yeah i i do agree there uh the way it does it can be very feel bad at points and i think especially like if you're if there is a skill or like an experience difference between the players amani just amplifies that to 11. i i think that the way that amani takes away options from the other other player is um, at points problematic mm -hmm. but in general i do agree that the game benefits from having cards that say you need to interact with me otherwise uh, i will start doing things and i think uh, in that sense like amani is a very healthy effect even uh, compared to some other things agreed like we can have a discussion about the numbers like the four might be a problem but yeah Maybe one I, free and, would be a lot fairer. And also, I, also, I think you could like fix the trace at a three or something. Like being able to trace five with a big agenda is uh, quite a lot. No. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think in general the card is a really good idea, and having something like it, which also like triggers off of scoring, which means that the corp has actually a, a reason to push the game forward, uh, is is a healthy thing to have in a game. Yep. I, know the, I really I mean, like this NEH. Yes. Yeah. It's a good deck. Like, I remember Asker throwing it into the server. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. And it was like, this is just good, fair Netrunner. This is just, whoa, it's just NEH, but updated. Super. Yeah. All right, then. I think at 1 hour and 34, uh, we should probably come to an <laughs> but... Uh, this has been a i think this has been a fun episode and I, I i would assume that anybody at this point who is watching videos coming on this channel uh knows that they tend to go long and tend to go very deep in <laughs> the analysis so uh i hope that whoever is watching this is uh happy to watch through one and a half an hour and not uh i don't know forced to watch this or something i don't know why you would but anyway. i hope i um, hope i hope they considered it a successful deep dive <laughs> no there was no successful deep dive in this game it is trashed sad um anyhow i would like to thank you for being on this show even though you are part of nwe and i would assume that this is not the last time that people hear from you thank you for inviting um, me. no 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 thank you for inviting yeah. me and basically basically i was really really glad you uh played this game because here i felt here i have something to add like like punitive uh, <laughs> jinteki like i mentioned i have nothing to add there <laughs> yeah this is definitely your realm and 
the kind of deck that you that you really do well in. <clears throat> Thank yeah. you for inviting so, me. It was a fun one. And uh, I think I have to keep up a tradition, even though uh, Jackmate is not here, and end the show with a hack the planet. <laughs> <laughs> hack the planet. <laughs>